This is Kevin Conroy, the voice of Batman. This is Lauren Lester, the voice of Robin and Nightwing. And you're listening to the DCAU Review. Hosted by Cal and Liam. Streaming at DCAUReview.com. And on your favorite podcast app. Gotham City is out of control. An entire city screaming in fear. Super villains walk the streets, preying on the innocent. They will learn the true nature of harm. The police are powerless. A creature prowls this urban wasteland. Is that? He moves in darkness. For some, he is a rumor, a name whispered in the corridors of the underworld, waiting for the chance to strike. Let every criminal know the acid taste of fear. You crazy! Bat! Giant bat! Gotham has forgotten what justice means. The Dark Knight is here to remind them. Batman. Good guys wear black. Welcome, everybody, to episode 230 of the DCAU Review. I am one of your two hosts, Cal. With me, my good friend, good brother, the man that runs our Twitter page. That's right. It's Liam. Liam, man, after a just an incredible episode last week, we we are the hits keep on coming here as we are once again celebrating the 30th anniversary and really kind of the five-year anniversary of this podcast is we are uh we are kind of looking back at uh at some of the greatest hits the batman the animated series greatest hits some of those episodes that we uh we reviewed almost five years ago at this point uh but with a little bit of a twist and and uh we are, we have another fun one uh, a somewhat legendary one again today and uh, yet another special guest correspondent. That's right, Cal. Uh, very exciting for us, especially because we are today, we are completing the Watchtower database Infinity Gauntlet for our <laughs> for guest spots here. We've had James on. I mean, retired to James at this point. We've had him on like 15 <laughs> times. We've had Maddie on before. And now finally, we have the great Ted Kendrick from Watchtower Database joining us as our special guest correspondent to talk about this famous episode, The Last Laugh, as we give it a second look and, and Ted is along for the ride to give us his thought as well. So welcome, Ted, and thanks for joining us. Hey, thank you, Cal and Liam. I am happy to be here. I, I recall, I think the only other time we've really like interacted on the YouTube world was when we did the 24 hour live stream and yes. we came up with the top five DCAU episodes in, in like such a chaotic way <laughs> it, it, really was, was. It, was, it was like not really the most judicious way of coming up with the top five episodes but we came up with them we yeah. came up with them. I'm pretty sure Tim Talk is still mad about us for, for voting out uh, what was the episode that we voted yeah, I'm trying to remember the order uh over the edge yeah, yeah. we voted out over the oh, edge no. Chris was really for uh, it's so hard yeah i mean that's such a good episode but last laugh we did not include it it didn't this but... didn't come anywhere close to the top five uh at dcau episodes uh but that is a that is a fun uh fun panel that we had and i know you, mm. uh, you guys still have that it's actually available on uh i believe on the pod tower so you can check that out I think so it's somewhere uh, out there somewhere yeah. out there in youtube land absolutely but uh yes we do have uh we have a re-review or a uh, review of uh, a special a, edition special the, edition the george lucas <laughs> 1997 special edition version that's right of the of the last laugh which we will get into here we will uh we will let ted he will be our official scorer this week his scores oh. are the only ones that really count because we are not revising our scores uh, from our original score we will talk about the original score of course that we we laid down and really talk about whether or not to, do we agree with ourselves that's mm -hmm. do five years later do we agree <laughs> with the the thoughts and choices that we made uh so often i disagree with the choices that i made five years ago but you know that's i'm not talking about scores here. we're talking right about, about so, life right i'm talking about uh, just life in general five years ago oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, no. but here we are and we're going to take a look at this before we do we're going to get into uh james's favorite part of the episode actually <laughs> which is we're going to talk about the official imdb synopsis Ooh. for this week's episode which is actually brought to you by the pod tower that's right head over to youtube.com slash the pod tower and you can get our entire catalog of episodes including 
episode four in which we re- originally reviewed the last laugh and uh, as lo- well as the rest of our catalog as well as some amazing content from tim talk and the watchtower data buds so you can check that out mm-hmm. youtube.com slash the pod tower but do those video game live streams on there i just started playing through batman rise of sinzu Ooh, i'm going through this nightwing that is a repetitive game yes, yes. And i i beat the scarecrow this afternoon and he was hard so yeah. you have to wade through the gas oh yeah i never i never remember i remember i never figured out like what the tell was supposed to be for which of yeah the- yeah i don't know <laughs> like, you just i beat find him. him i don't know you find him <laughs> Yeah, it was a search. It took me half an hour, I think. Absolutely. <laughs> Very That's good. good. <laughs> that will bring us to our official IMDb synopsis, as Cal said, for The Last Laugh, which was written by Carl Swenson, directed by a friend of the show, Kevin Altairi, with music by Shirley Walker and animation by our favorite Cal, Acom Production Company. Oh, uh, mm-hmm. the, the infamous uh, production. Infamous. Yeah, I know with the animation duties here today and we'll certainly talk about that in visuals and get mm-hmm. head stops on that in a minute here but the imdb synopsis reads as such the joker's plot to send all of gotham into hang on <laughs> i don't feel like this is a sentence the joker's <laughs> plot to send all of gotham into insanity with joker gas from a garbage scale leads to a battle on the water <laughs> <laughs> Well, it's not wrong. I mean, yeah, they're not. It was, <laughs> it's accurate. Uh, Garbage scow, good word. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Battle yeah, on the water. Uh, technically, I mean, yeah. that's most of the episode. <laughs> yeah, that is that is true. As, uh, as we mm-hmm. a lot here. <laughs> yes, that's true. So we uh, we open things up, and uh, well, we see a uh, a gentleman that is driving over the Gotham Bridge, and as he is g- driving over the Gotham Bridge with his window rolled down, we notice that. He appears to be some sort of armored courier of some kind, and he uh, he smells an unpleasant smell. <laughs> he he smells something that uh, does not smell too great. As we see a garbage trowel uh, floating on the Gotham Harbor, and it's uh, it's it's apparently spreading its nauseous gas all over Gotham. <laughs> odor is is not uh is not just smell bad but also has some nasty side effects as it leads to uncontrollable laughter of course so Mm -hmm. uh this this man uh somewhat loses control of his body and uh as the gotham bridge is uh, going up as the scowl is rolling past uh he doesn't stop he runs right through (laughs) our little uh our little toll lane stoppage place there (laughs) and uh the the, uh, the 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 car goes up and over the bridge, plunging into the water. Not before I I don't know how, but the driver falls <laughs> out of the manages to fall out of the uh, the seat just so he's not killed. In the yeah, end. you can't kill him off. I mean, he's he's an uncredited Bob Hastings. He's Commissioner <laughs> right. Gordon. <laughs> Precisely, you can't let that guy die. There's no, and there's no death allowed in this cartoon. So That's the easiest right. way to do a stay alive, except for later. Correct. Correct. Yeah, <laughs> true. Uh, a little foreshadowing there. We mm-hmm. get uh, we get the the, the armored car, car plunging into the harbor, and then uh, we get we get more uncontrollable laughter as we notice that uh, some of the men painting the bridge are also uh, laughing uncontrollably. We then cut to Bruce Wayne, who is uh, I guess shaving. It's a very mm-hmm. strange scene. He's shaving himself. He cuts himself. Uh, and then we learn, of course, that this whole episode takes place on April the 1st. It's April Fool's mm-hmm. Day. And the way Time we learn it, 
Yep. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And the way that we learn that is that uh, Alfred plays a little little joke on Batman as he uh, play, does a little wordplay, and he draws Bruce a bath as he's prepared to uh, to get clean. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, uh, he literally drew a bath, and and Bruce isn't isn't uh, too amused with this. So, rough night of crime fighting, sir. Very. Well, you'll be happy to know I've drawn you a bath whenever you're ready. What's the deal, Alfred? I said I drew you a bath, sir. April Fools. Very funny, Alfred. I guess I'll just take a shower. Not a funny bone in his entire body. Alfred, hit the radio, would you? Right away, sir. Traffic is at a standstill on the Gotham Expressway where a trailer full of eggs is overturned. This just in. The Gotham police are investigating a series of near-fatal accidents along the riverfront. Initial reports indicate that hundreds of Gothamites have inexplicably begun acting like total laughing fools. More details as they become available. Sounds like a rather dirty April Fool's prank. Sounds like the Joker. He did it in a way that Acom can only do. <laughs> <laughs> this is true uh, bruce bruce then jumps into the shower and uh flips on the radio well he has alfred flip on the radio as punishment i guess and his, uh his face looks so sad and disturbed in the shower too it, as as he's like framed in the kind of bottom right there with the water pouring in he looks it's like one of the saddest bruce wayne is truly vulnerable <laughs> yes <laughs> yeah he is <laughs> when he's in the shower and nobody can see him yeah and then he'll reach for the towel and amanda waller will be standing right, right. there and, uh. uh yeah that that's a good that's a good callback i like that uh or flash forward whichever yeah but yeah, as, as as bruce gets out of the shower he hears that uh not only has there been a a rash of crashes automobile crashes down by the gotham harbor but the man on the radio begins to laugh uncontrollably and Alfred begins to speculate just as to what could be going on. And Bruce, of course, says that it sounds to him like it's the work of the Joker. That's right. It's a good guess. Because he's yeah. met him before in Joker's favor. <laughs> there right. you go. Right. So at least one time. <laughs> or Christmas with the Joker, depending if you count production order before air date. Right. <laughs> Who knows? Right. But this is not the first Joker right. appearance either way. He's met this guy. <laughs> he knows he knows he has a thing with gas, different kinds That's of right. time as it's the laughing gas but yes we see uh we see this garbage scout continue to go through uh, the city of gotham at that point and we find out that it's not just a garbage scout it's a submarine <laughs> using a garbage scout which is covered yeah. in this joker gas as and a, the submarine has a, a smile disguise. that's right it's that's a, right <laughs> the personalized joker submarine i remember well, joker's always gonna be on brand we speculate, yeah, we speculated this on when we reviewed it the first time, but you know how in Joker's Millions, the Joker is broke, like flat out <laughs> broke later on? We speculated that maybe because he invested so much money in this superfluous stuff <laughs> that he decided to brand with his smile. For instance, yeah. a smiling submarine attached to a garbage scowl. That's got to mm. cost, what, $10 million at least? <laughs> like. Come on. The world's finest made it a lot easier when you could just steal it from Luthor, who had already designed it like Precisely. a smile. Precisely. Precisely. You know? Yeah. Exactly. It was what he had to do eventually. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, we see the Joker on the loose as uh, as he he, they, he and his henchmen. Uh, first, they uh, using some some deep sea diving equipment that probably cost some money too. Uh, <laughs> yeah. They, they oh, find yeah. the uh, the sunken armored car from earlier in the episode and. Uh, they begin to loot that as uh, as we as we hear that Gotham is kind of just falling apart. We see uh, Summer Gleason reporting from the stock market, yeah, wearing <laughs> a gas mask. Oh, <laughs> the Gotham the things they put that girl through. <laughs> this is one of those things. When we had Kevin Altieri on the show, we asked him because that uh, he was on for Off Balance, where they're at like the weird uh, Statue of Liberty, yeah, uh, yeah, location, and we we're like, so is this just New York? <laughs> <laughs> is this or is there just another city in the fictional united states in yeah the EU that's exactly like new york and has a stock exchange and a statue of liberty uh -huh. that is in new york <laughs> he, he was non-committal in his answers if memory serves <laughs> i think there's some evidence on screen to place gotham in new york state mm -hmm. but maybe 
slightly next to New York. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Fair enough. Uncommitted. Northeast geograph- geography, yeah. That's right. It's somewhere up there. That's right. But we uh, we continue to hear the, uh, the Joker uh, as he's just... And we'll get into this certainly probably more in voice acting later, but he's just a quit machine and he keeps looking yes. directly into the camera like it's like it's a Looney Tunes or something to, mm. to deliver his quips. <laughs> he talks about the laugh. The only stocks going up today are the laughing stocks. Uh, what a good one. <laughs> what i call a sidewalk sale <laughs> he's on his a game this that's episode. right he's he's firing they're coming quick on on this one he's just free line it seems it's his day bad. april fools you know it's like <laughs> he's it's like the far. joker's christmas if we didn't have another episode about that <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, precisely yes uh so so with this we get our uh we we get them looting and batman showing up he takes the bat boat you know yeah he thought ahead here first appearance ever of the bat boat gotham harbor the uh the bat boat equipped with lasers of course (laughs) you have to have lasers on got to you know you you never know when you might need them Mm -hmm. more foreshadowing here (laughs) and i don't know how he can control them like he did when he needed them yeah, we'll talk right. about that when we get there i guess he had a real precise aim for uh, i hope so yes <laughs> but uh yeah so we we get our first little scuffle here between batman and uh as he lands on the garbage scowl he uh mm. he does another very like looney tunes three stooges bit where as mm. the joker is looking out through the periscope he punches the periscope and it vibrates <laughs> yeah. enough to to hurt the joker uh so as he's landed on this scab- garbage Which, scowl <laughs> r- real quick am i making this up or did they do something similar in the the batman 66 movie with adam west like i know there's a submarine with a periscope definitely. i don't remember if batman actually like punches the periscope but i don't know if he punches there's definitely something yeah. that, like involving the <laughs> it's been a while it felt a little too similar That's yes right. yeah there's a lot of there's a lot of adam west dna in this episode especially yeah as we'll get into voice acting and, and a lot of the lines that they they wrote for this but yeah they uh so batman hits the periscope knocks the joker down and then uh we we get them headed to the surface uh for this initial scuffle here uh the mm-hmm. joker's two henchmen and uh, they they begin a, a a bit of a fight on this scowl against Batman, and uh, he's he's kind of quickly uh, quickly overmatched here by yeah. by these uh, by these fellas. Well, by one of the one of his henchmen. Say, we, we kinda one have, of them's really strong. That's right. Yeah, <laughs> like Captain Chekhov. Clown. Yeah, Chekhov's mm-hmm. Captain Clown because we see him piloting fake piloting the garbage scowl <laughs> while it's actually. Yeah piloted by the submarine but he hasn't done anything he doesn't I don't, does he does he go off when they're like looting the stock market area i don't think he goes with yeah them. he's been on the um the barge the whole time he's just right. driving it he's charging yeah. he's charging that's like a charging station mm-hmm. <laughs> it might be yeah. that's it. <laughs> he's it's funny it. to think about captain clown as sort of like a proto harley quinn like this is obviously before Harley. This mm-hmm. is Joker's other, I don't know, main, <laughs> main psychic. <laughs> yep. I love that idea. It was yeah. it was the robot woman from Mask of the Phantasm with a knife and then uh-huh. Captain Clown. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Is that is Captain Clown the son of <laughs> Joker? We, and who robot? knows? <laughs> we we do not know enough about Captain Clown's backstory. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> like origins. did carl rosen build him like right. before hardack or something yeah, right That's all good, i don't all know but yes as we see here in this initial <laughs> uh this initial fight batman is very quickly overmatched he tries to uh, attack him in the traditional way and uh again very very sort of wacky and slapstick uh captain clown mm-hmm. picks him up and spins him faster than any human man could uh, <laughs> yeah. like, spin another and, uh, and, uh, <laughs> Look who's come to trash the place. A fitting setting for you, Joker. Ooh, I just love to get down and dirty. Okay, boys, it's playtime. <laughs> it's about time. What are we waiting for? Why don't you 
don't you take your mask off and have a few laughs? <laughs> Cut the clowning, the Joker. The Looney Tunes, like Tasmanian Devil, Whirlwind. Yep, absolutely. <laughs> All right, and uh, and that leads to a uh, the the death trap of the episode for Batman mm-hmm. as he is locked into a trash can. They don't just pull the gas mask off and let him. Yeah. Let him uh, go it's not even like it's like a biohazard like clamp right. trash can. It's like. Correct. <laughs> yep, you're gonna melt. You're gonna if you need hydrochloric acid in this little yes. there, yep that's exactly what this trash can's for that's right so, uh, <laughs> we put him in there and then and the joker uh, is uh quick to to start just stabbing it as he claims he's putting air holes but of course that's actually so that the can will sink as uh, as the captain heaves it into the water gives it the old heave ho yep. as, mm-hmm. uh, as joker says and it seems as though uh, our villains have won as Batman begins to sink down to the uh, the bottom of the very we'll talk about this in visuals too the very dirty yeah looking Gotham Gotham Harbor here it's gross down there brown and green and yellow and yep. as he as he sinks to the bottom as uh, as Ted sort of alluded to we have the the reemergence of the bat boat we see some blinking mm-hmm. lights on the uh on on the utility belt to indicate that uh, he can remote control it and then he he gets it in position and has as ted mentioned some pinpoint aim <laughs> and yes to use the bat boats laser cannons to uh, to slice off just enough of the trash can that he can he can escape. avoid his shoulder right. <laughs> but not so much that he puts the hole through his eye <laughs> yes <laughs> well, yeah oh yep but that uh but that leads to to batman re-emerging at, at the top of the at the surface and and he's sort of re uh, reinvigorated ready for this uh this big final confrontation as uh, as the joker and and his henchmen are uh, unaware that batman is, is coming for them now he yeah he mm. uh he docks his boat uh he docks his boat uh to the garbage scow i guess at that point. is that where he docks the boat to the garbage scow or is that before where captain clown disengages it i can't remember i think i don't know the bat boat's just i think i don't think we see you don't see the bat boat around around. so somehow batman gets gets somehow he survived somehow he gets somehow he gets back to the garbage scow where they are they are applying a fresh coat of nauseous gas laughing Mm -hmm. gas to the to the garbage and uh, he he interrupts them with a uh, a well placed throwing star, the bat throwing That's star. Right. We well, get sure the, can. yeah, a little. Whoosh, and, uh, I like the idea of like these auxiliary bat gadgets that we almost never. Yeah, see. Mm-hmm. it's not a battering, right? Yeah. It's sharp. It's pointy. It's shiny. Right. It's specifically mm-hmm. for like cutting through something. So mm-hmm. I guess you can't can't throw these at guys heads like that's right does with, uh, with the regular batteries. you could yeah. in the adventures of batman and robin video game i will say that you could <laughs> throw them there but uh you know you could not throw them you would not be able to throw them in in, in, uh, in <laughs> actual show that's right but batman's really just ready he's had enough at this point uh, as joker's thugs begin to move the, move towards him he's just ripping off their masks just exposing them to the to the joker toxin <laughs> mm-hmm. which he knows could result in permanent insanity by the way <laughs> by the way i didn't even <laughs> but, mention the part yeah. where alfred uh we forgot oh, the yeah. part where alfred is affected by this yeah. gas and goes insane uh as he starts talking back to bruce he's finally he's finally had enough of <laughs> bruce just bossing him around <laughs> And uh, and scaring him half to death uh, all the time and making him you know sew up his mm-hmm. wounds and not laughing at his bath drawings. Correct. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Alfred, I left the hex key upstairs in the den. Would you bring it down? Oh, go fetch it yourself. Very funny, Alfred. But I've no time to play. Alfred. Alfred. <laughs> Just a little spring cleaning, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Ha 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 ha! 
<laughs> I believe I've contracted a giant case of the giggles. <laughs> Lengthy exposure to the gas will result in permanent insanity. So he's like upstairs in the manor, like uh, destroying the um, the grandfather clock. That's usually the entrance to the back cave, but in this episode. Batman like runs out of the side door that like this this bookshelf opens up <laughs> and it's the only the only other time you see that side entrance um is the Heart of Steel episode oh. when Randa Duane uh mm. discovers the Batcave through the little side door which yeah. interestingly enough Randa Duane is a robot as is Captain Clown which <laughs> I just spoiled it, and they and they're <laughs> dancing together in the in the villains bar in Batman and Harley Quinn. It all makes sense. Oh my god! It all comes down to the bookshelf. <laughs> now we understand. it all makes sense. Yep, it was. They wrote this episode with that in mind at the end. They yeah. had to we'll eventually they had have to have dancing in a bar. Yep. Yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, <laughs> oh, but it is yep. something that that you guys bring up, which is that. This is pretty high stakes. Like as far as a plot, like a villain plot in this series, like the Joker's gas is just permeating the entire city, including Alfred himself. And if the gas is is in the air for too long, the entire city will go insane. Yeah. That's an awful lot of quipping for <laughs> yes <laughs> a situation here. As we'll, uh, we'll get to again probably in voice acting in a little bit. Mm-hmm. I'm not sure he's taking this as seriously as he should, considering. Great. Uh, well, it's April Fool's, so maybe this isn't lethal laughing gas. I mean, who knows? Maybe it's <laughs> fake lethal laughing gas, is what you're sure. trying to say. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, we do get our round two of Batman versus Captain Clown, finally. Yes. Just when you think he's cornered Joker, uh, Captain Clown steps in. We knew there had to be a final showdown between these two. And it's uh, Batman, once again, is, is not faring too well, at least initially, until uh, he sort of evens the odds by uh, get, getting on top of a, a, like a, what do you call that, a trash compactor? Pretty like much, he, yeah. He, he, he tricks Captain Clown into getting on top of this trash compactor, beats his robot face off. Yeah. <laughs> uh, thus yeah. revealing truly that, uh, yes, finally, that he is indeed an android, which again, mm-hmm. the Joker invested a lot of money in this guy, clearly. Right. <laughs> he or he, he sold or stole a replicant from somebody <laughs> you know and gave it a clown aesthetic right. he, he needed to have the clown aesthetic put on it he's yeah. like all right i'll steal the body but i gotta go yeah. someplace to for outfit I, this thing and clown i kind here. of feel like captain clown wasn't really aware he was a clown like he's just a killer <laughs> robot just dressed like a clown like he's still in killer uh, robot mode <laughs> he doesn't like care about his clothes somehow it's like a joker idea like <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> go to like a tailor to get like a big and tall sailor suit for this guy, <laughs> and, uh, and the, and the robot could care less. That's <laughs> right. And all, all you have to do is point the, the Captain Clown at somebody and just say "Go kill it," and that's that's his default programming is to kind of Frankenstein <laughs> towards it, and all this other stuff is just window dressing that he doesn't even realize. I love that. <laughs> but yeah, so uh, unfortunately, so much potential behind Captain Clown, right? <laughs> there was. Unfortunately, oh, Batman no. assured us that there would he would be uh, one and done, except for his appearance later on, his cameo appearance later his on. His unexplained cameo. <laughs> he's yes, his his uh, unexplained resurrection. He's but we see him mm-hmm. killed and put into a little square, little nice little compact. Square. That's right. That's how we know we saw the body. Right. And always shows the body <laughs> and joker just doubled down on it when he was like you kill captain Cl-. first in disbelief and then again in other. you kill captain clown you kill captain clown just for that batman <laughs> Yeah, 
yeah yeah and and this <laughs> follows suit with the, what we would see and uh and what we know about this cartoon which is any chance that the writers got to show brutal deaths with inanimate well, mm-hmm. characters that could be robots ventriloquist dummies uh you know he they would do brutal deaths as much as possible with these characters so that of course get away with it so uh we get <laughs> this of course at heart of steel we get robots getting crushed by uh, mm-hmm. elevators and mm-hmm. electric right. and all that stuff and so yeah lots of brutal deaths here for for robots unfortunately but yeah batman then it's up to batman to chase down the joker and one final uh final uh, chance to get his hands on the Joker, uh, they meet at the end of where they're burning the garbage, mm-hmm. and the, uh, unfortunately, the the little conveyor belt that they're on ends up falling and letting out into this furnace, molten lava. Yeah, <laughs> that's where Captain Clown goes. So, <laughs> all right, all right I, I don't know how he comes back for Batman and Harley Quinn. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, so, so Batman narrowly escapes by swinging on some ropes and landing in some buckets. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, mm-hmm. there's a, there's, he managed to get off the bucket and get into a, a minor fisticuffs in the Joker, much like he does in uh, Christmas with the Joker. Yeah. The mishap where he slips and he <laughs> trips and he falls over this railing. It is similar, yeah. And uh, Batman must ag- once again spare the Joker's uh, life from being uh, fried. So uh, he does so. He think pretends to think about it for a moment. But he <laughs> a little does. April Fool's joke. Yeah, Batman's guy. Yeah. Yeah, 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 he 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 he's got to let him got to let him laugh a little bit about it. He's got to go laugh to himself. Uh, he's got to have the last laugh. That's oh my uh, god! Uh, that's why that's they the called it the that. episode. <laughs> In my mind, man. <laughs> you get a comedic bow put on the episode as well. Since that's right, there it is. On the it's tied. We get uh, <laughs> we get the we get uh, uh, Alfred cleaning up the expensive vases that he's been mm-hmm. destroying or caught destroying before, and uh, Batman uh, tells him that he he'll forgive him. Of course, he'll just take it out of his paycheck uh, for the next several years, and which Alfred- he does because this was Ephraim Zimbalist Jr.'s first role as Alfred. That's right. so every every role Ephraim had to pay out a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I was gonna say, well, I, I mean, he's working, he's working for Alfred in five, ten years in the future. So uh, Alfred That's had to true. had to work quite past the time of being able to accept social security at this point. That's so. why he never retired. Yep, <laughs> yep. He's paying off these vases, but Batman assures him he's just playing an April Fool's joke on him. And, we get our mm. fades black. So, yeah. Uh, that's the episode. That's the episode. Uh, <laughs> our original scores for this episode, uh, Liam and you and I had the same score, which was a five out of 10 for our plot. Um, I want to say a lot of it uh, relied on the, this overall silliness of the uh-huh. of the episode. It's pretty, it's pretty silly. Um, uh, I, I think there's not a ton there's some action not a ton of action Mm -hmm. this is early on in this whole lot yeah Yeah. um so probably had to do that ted what what were your thoughts and then you can give us what your your i gave the plot of four actually even worse than the five (laughs) only uh, because agreed i i agree there's a little action Mm -hmm. it's very simple it's very also like kind of campy adam west styles you know like just this trashy barge and everyone's laughing it's april fools it's all just very simple it's not very like even though the stakes are high this is like we assume a lethal gas that could potentially destroy the whole city no one's just taking it that seriously (laughs) and so it's i think the combination of all of that brings my score down on the plot that i i think that's more than fair (laughs) yeah i think yeah you would almost if batman were like the one person taking this seriously Mm mm-hmm He's a but little, even he isn't really right he's quipping <laughs> along and making garbage puns and clown puns yeah and, yeah and, and whatever else as well so he's kind of like in on it with the joker and it's he's like having fun with it right it's just <laughs> like meanwhile his his father figure is about to descend into permanent madness or right. whatever the, whatever the back computer says that like echoes as he as he's cradling alfred's head and permanent insanity is setting in and he's and he's there kind of just quipping it up and yeah I, I think it's i think it's a lot of fun like as far as just like a quirky little thing but it's yeah it feels like batman should be the straight man to this in, mm-hmm. the, in the comedy routine and he should be taking everything 
deadly serious because to me i think that's where a lot of the comedy of a character like batman comes in is these exactly absolutely yeah. ridiculous people around him but he's kind of playing everything even in something like the adam west series batman himself is always taking everything very very seriously which is where a lot of the comedy comes from mm-hmm. even though he's dressed like a bat right. Right. <laughs> right that fact aside right it's all it's all very, it's very serious right it's a very ridiculous uh, scenario for anyone to be in but he's taking it so deadly serious that that's Mm -hmm. you can derive a lot of comedy from that and i feel like that's to just have him kind of quipping along it just it feels more like we're trending towards like the uh the schumacher batman films yeah like the burton films Mm -hmm. which themselves (laughs) were were, you know could be quite schlocky and campy in in a nice way like i like those movies but but yeah it's just like every line in this episode that the Batman and Joker throw at each other is like a joke or a quip or a pun. And it, just... it seems to me like it was just created before the show really found its DNA, like, mm-hmm. and that this was just a, a super early attempt, you know, to to get it down on paper and a learning experience from it, probably. I was gonna say, yeah, to your point, I don't believe this particular uh, writer ever. Uh, Mr. Swenson, Carl Swenson, ever mm-hmm. he's not credited on any other episode, so maybe he okay, maybe, yeah, maybe he was in a writer's room or something for longer than than just this one episode, but uh, doesn't seem like this is before. Maybe they had their core of of mm-hmm. yeah, I Burnett, could be Aldini and yeah, it seems like it might have been a pre Alan Burnett script or something that they acquired. Um, I know that there were like freelancers who who wrote spec scripts for the show like early on, and this might have been from that um i don't know yeah leah mentioned uh some of his some of his credits were included like goof troop which oh. <laughs> is a fine cartoon but it's a completely different mindset when you're thinking about writing uh, a children yeah um than what we would expect from a batman the animated series so very very well could have been just you're going off of what you've a lot of those those writers knew knew of batman which was the adam west or even you know maybe some of the super friends stuff which was still kind of a takeoff of the adam west stuff right so, right you know batman quipping as much as he did batman there there was one or two lines that did did seem a little bit like a, a michael keaton it could you could have heard michael keaton deliver um but a lot of it a lot of the dialogue written really does make it feel uh, very campy I will, i'll say that and it's just doesn't fit with the tone the overall mm-hmm. episode two also it's just the joker's just gonna loot everything and kill everybody i guess which just doesn't feel that deep of a it's just not that deep of a plot like right you're just gonna kill everybody in gotham and steal all the money oh right. okay all right oh, it <laughs> must great. be that time i mean it's, <laughs> it's a little simple for the joker but yeah <laughs> precisely all right so uh ted gave a lower score than us hey that makes that that makes my agreeing with myself feel even better because i don't think i don't yeah i don't know that i would harsh on the plot i don't know that i would move it any lower but i i think that i I definitely don't disagree with a a four there because yeah four and five are pretty close yeah they're at ten absolutely all right, well, let's move on to our next category, which is going to be the animation and visuals category. So uh, as we mentioned at the top, uh, ACOM or ACOM, depending on your preference here, uh, has legendary status on this podcast because <laughs> uh, we, we learned as we went through some of these episodes, uh, especially some of the earlier ones, man, there's just some of these episodes that things just look so bad. And then we yeah. learned, of course, <laughs> about you know some of the some of the uh the 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 less than nice things that some of the uh, directors and producers had to say Mm -hmm. about this particular animation studio because there is uh there's some interesting stuff in this episode with perspective and yeah yeah characters character model like being wildly off model looking different from scene to scene strange faces strange proportions uh what did you have you mentioned uh, bruce in the shower that was a really weird moment yeah that was that was a I, one what, what notes did you yeah. have for animation visuals ted um so i gave it a six which is almost maybe too kind <laughs> i might have been too harsh on the yeah. plot and too kind on the visuals um but uh because there, i agree that there were some goofy uh moments just it looked a little rough and again i attribute that to the same reasons as the plot it just being like an early episode there was still f- figuring it out um acom i guess in particular i don't know the the production order of this episode but it had to be within the first 
handful. Um, so uh, as far as like specific, oh, th- I will give it, I will say something nice about the animation. There's one <laughs> shot, there's one shot I really love and it's when um, the Joker's going through the conveyor belt and he's sitting cross-legged and the the lighting just moves by him and like yeah, those yeah those like just flickers those yeah. of slits um yeah and that's that shot's just always been i think like a really cool joker moment with with of course his theme song playing in the background we'll get to music in a second yeah. but but yeah that that shot was really cool um otherwise nothing really stood out as far as animation goes yeah that's fair yeah. yeah, our original score. So it, to make you feel better, Liam's original score was a six. My original okay. score was a seven. I looking at my score, I think that's a bit generous <laughs> as a seven. I'd probably <laughs> if I had to do it over again, I'd probably take it down closer to a five, uh, maybe if, maybe a four. Like there are some things that I enjoy, you know, Captain Clown, the, the character model for Car- Captain Clown is great. I love that. Yeah. I love yeah. uh, the the bit that they did once Batman beats his face off and you just have the robot head. Yeah, there. that like, was a great static painting. And then the, the like the, whatever mm-hmm. that that the glowy eye glowy thing eye lights up. I thought that was a neat trick, um, you know. Yeah. There, there is some weird things in here. Uh, when he takes the one guy's ma- the the one henchman's mask off when Batman's fighting him, and he sort of starts succumbing to the to the uh, to the gas, he has mm-hmm. this hyper detailed face with all yeah. these nooks and crannies. You can see his individual teeth. And Liam and I, for the life of us, are like, he kind of looks like somebody. Like, is this based on, is this supposed to look like a, a famous person? I don't know what the or deal was. Or somebody on the, or somebody on the production team or, team or something. We couldn't huh. figure it out. But regardless, the yeah. amount of detail in that one shot compared to the detail in everything else in the episode is like, this is, looks completely. I noticed something kind of similar to that when, mm-hmm. um, the gas is going through the city and random people are starting to succumb in the, mm-hmm. the streets. There's yeah. a couple of similar, like kind of too detailed looking faces Yeah, that, that were definitely jarring. Mm-hmm. Which if you're going to have it and everybody's that way, okay. But it, clearly that's not, yeah. this, not this series. <laughs> and it's not what you're used to. So when you get one of those shots, it's like, whoa, that's, that's <laughs> very strange. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I agree with you, Ted, though. I think the, the the best sequence is the little conveyor belt bit where they cut back and forth and Batman's running down the conveyor belt. You have the Joker yes. kind of sitting there cross-legged. I love that. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I think the shot of the bath boat on the water is pretty good too. The water is animated. Yeah, well. when some- you first see it and it's like kind of, it's almost like um, the bat boat scene in o- Over the Edge, which yes. is another kind of cool Agreed. one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where yeah. the water's yeah. going. Absolutely. Yeah. So those were some, those were some nice things. Uh, the rest of it, there's a lot of off model stuff, a lot of perspective issues. The one mm-hmm. shot where Batman slides down the chute and he jumps off and jumps into the bucket. There's like yeah. this weird shot yeah. where Batman's head is like, you get the back of Batman's head and he like turns around. It, Liam literally was watching it with me and we were like, what was that? He was like, every part <laughs> of Batman's head looked weird in that shot. Like, uh-huh. that's another moment the joker went in head first he did like this little dive move into the shoot but he came out feet first so (laughs) so some some somewhere during the pipe he like switched around and (laughs) (laughs) Uh, (laughs) yeah i think honestly the joker the inconsistency of the joker model which i think we probably touched on in our original review as well i think christmas with the joker is also an an acom episode I think so. Like anytime you see those really dark, like raccoon eyes that the mm-hmm. Joker had in some of these mm-hmm. early episodes, but it's just he doesn't have them in every shot either. Because I think you could settle into it better if it was consistent. Because we yeah we talk about that a lot on our show where like a you know the Spectrum Batman has the droopier nose right it's pretty consistent throughout the whole episode, so you kind of settle into it if you're watching you know if you're watching it. And as long as it's consistent for that one individual episode, you kind of forgive it. And, you know, we mm-hmm. always like it to like, hey, I, you know, I read a comic book drawn by Jason Fabok and then I read one drawn by Greg Capullo. It's going to look way different. Right. You have different styles. So like that doesn't bother me. But when it's like five different Joker, it feels like five <laughs> different Joker models in within the one episode, then it's, yeah. it's pretty distracting for me. Um, I would agree with that for sure. Yeah, so that was that was kind of my big note. Other than uh, the stuff we already mentioned, it it also feels like maybe in the later episodes 
maybe the storyboard artists and directors were better at idiot proofing uh-huh. some of this stuff. Of, <laughs> right, and, right, right. You know, obviously, I don't, I don't think they were aware of like what studio it was going to go to when they were doing that portion of the episode, but of like, like, like Cal said, just like the angles on Batman and like it's a side profile shot and then he's moving his head all around. And it's like in, in the future, they probably were like, it, maybe it's better if we just do like a straight on shot. So you don't have mm-hmm. to do like these weird perspective shots or, you know, the side of his face or, or where you have to see like the bottom of his chin or stuff that we yeah. don't. Yeah. Like in Christmas, the Joker has a really jarring bottom of Joker's chin as he's like <laughs> laughing up. You know what I'm talking about. Yeah, exactly. It's really weird. Yes. And I was kind of looking for that in this one to see if it would happen and it didn't. But... Mm. There's, yeah, there's still, still some unsettling like perspective that they decided to, to go with so yeah it's still early on in the in the show and again uh, we can chalk it up to a a the animation studio but you stick in with your six if you if you had to if you had i to. might not yeah i might not i kind of want to drop it down a little more you're, now you haven't set it in yet we're yeah. not out of the visuals yeah i think i might drop it down to a five all that's, right that's fair yeah i think because I would... it's still got like beautiful backgrounds and like yeah. there's still like really attractive animation uh, going on i was gonna say and that's it's still of... batman in my series yes absolutely and that's that's one of the things I think when Cal, Cal and I were first doing it, we would just call this the animation sec- section, and then we realized like, well, that's not really giving this show enough credit if we're only talking about like fluidity of the movement. If we're not talking about character designs and background designs and things like that, we're kind of, you know, we're discrediting a lot of incredibly talented people's hard work. So right, right. I think if you talk about the whole visual package, like like I said, I really like how dirty and gross Gotham looks in this episode. Like you. Yeah. Really- you know, like I said, the water's like brown and yellow and green and just feels like an awful, just, you know, terrible city <laughs> to live in, like a big, you know, a big major city with a lot of pollution and it's, you know, and it's water and, and all of that. There's a lot of like cool aesthetic things about Gotham that I think are, are really well done, especially by, you know, the background artists and people mm-hmm. like that who, who do a lot of great work, even if the, the end result ended up being let down a little bit by the animation team yeah there, there's this one shot where it like kind of pulls back out of the city and goes towards wayne manor where mm-hmm. this little balloon floats by that i i remember thinking like that was a really cool background mm-hmm. shot mm-hmm. Uh, just for a transitionary thing absolutely yeah absolutely so yeah you it's a good i think that's good perspective to uh to, to you know to uh give credit to yes. people and and to not which is why it kept so high but that's why i was like kind right. of more towards the higher end of things it was like, right. well it's still batman in my series it's, right. you know there you go. <laughs> Absolutely. It's just a not as good animated <laughs> episode. Correct. All right, correct. <laughs> All right. Uh, well, let's move on to our next category, which we've uh, we've danced around. Uh, th- no pun intended. A, a couple different. Oh, dance to music. <laughs> yes. <laughs> talk about our music and uh, man. This, when I think, Ted, I don't, I don't know about you, but when I think about the episodes of Batman, the animated series, this is like one or one A of episodes that come up. The theme song mm-hmm. that I can, like the second that the episode starts, it's like, okay, this is this uh, this song plays so much throughout the episode in different yeah. ways it performs. It, it's almost as if it's his own character in the episode. You mean the sort of like the drumming, like do 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 do. Yep. Do 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 Which um, I was reading about this episode on Wikipedia on the DCAU wiki, and they they listed, and I went to double check, and I kind of agree with this that that theme was reused in the Superman anime series episode Father's Day. And I listened to a little bit of that soundtrack and in Father's Day, there's the do 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 But they don't do the Captain Clown bit. Like I, I at least in my head, I'm like, Captain Clown, <laughs> Captain Clown. Oh, no, bit. So they don't do that in Father's that. Day. <laughs> 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 I can't uh, unhear it. Yeah. I'm never gonna unhear that as the words being. <laughs> That's the Captain <laughs> Clown theme. <laughs> so good. But, uh, man what a incredible piece of music and like it it just defines the entire episode like i mm-hmm. this i remember this episode from probably the first time that i saw it 30 years ago or whatever it was because of the music of this episode and it just even early on in the the production and the creation mm-hmm. of the show it's was setting apart what you would see in animation and it's like this is the rest of this show this episode is 
per- very forgettable. Like there's yeah. very little about this episode, maybe other than Captain Clown and the draw you a bath line. Like <laughs> the, everything else in this episode, I could probably forget, but this theme song makes me remember this episode and gives me the yeah. nostalgic feelings to love this episode, even if I don't love the animation mm-hmm. or even if I don't love the plot. The music really carries it, and it does such a good job of transitioning between that, like, episode theme that I just kind of hummed, and then, like, the Joker's classic theme, Mm -hmm. and then Batman's theme when he comes in, it just seamlessly weaves in and out of all of it. And even at one point, I'm pretty sure it's when he's running through the, um, the, uh, the molten, whatever, trash burning place at the end (laughs) of it they're doing the tim burton theme for like a split second it goes into that and that was a little bit of me yeah maybe the only time that i can't think of another time off the top of my head where we hear the tim burton they they touch on it a little bit they use it just a little bit non leather yeah okay which we which we touched on last week with james because i wouldn't have remembered that either Mm because i was thinking about that a lot of how even though it's the main theme for the right show intro you don't really hear that because it, you know, they use they use Shirley Walker's theme for mm-hmm. and that even ends up replacing it as the adventures That's of right. Robin theme later on. So it is funny, and again, in these early episodes when maybe they weren't, this is an I think a good example or something that was good about when this was still a little bit more Wild West and not necessarily all nailed down as far as the musical style of the show to to just bring that in, but. Uh, to your point i love the musical selection too like when they're on the scow there's like a a jaunty sea tune version of the joker's theme and of the <laughs> that's right the yeah sound theme like it's played more on accordion uh-huh. and like lighter strings mm-hmm. when, when they're on the scow and then at the end when they're when they're running on the conveyor belt it's more of the traditional you know you know sharper strings and and horns we would come to expect from from this year yeah yeah. And when he's looting earlier in the episode too, when they're running around the town, it's it's the dark Joker theme yes. going on. Then absolutely. Yeah. So the idea that there's like a specific like, see, remember like two years ago when sh- sea shanty things were big yes. on TikTok. <laughs> <laughs> like, yes. It's like there's a sea shanty version of the Joker theme. <laughs> I want to hear that. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, I kind of did do the kind of there. Yeah, (laughs) such a little touch to throw in there, as you know, and and the way it sort of transitions out of that, and Uh you have in that sequence when they're running, when Batman's running on the conveyor belt, and Joker's sitting on the the Captain Clown cube. That's right. Kind of transition. You hear the Shirley Walker theme that goes into a little bit of the the Danny Elfman Tim Burton theme. And then you see flash to the Joker and the Joker theme comes in and then it flashes back to Batman and you go back into the Batman theme. And yeah, the musical transitions, I think you touched on Ted, is, is like so fantastic in this episode. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, hard yeah. So it uh, saves it, you yeah, could say. It truly, <laughs> it does. It, right. It, There's a reason that you uh, that you volunteered for this episode. Uh, <laughs> and it, I think the music is a big part of that. Other than Captain You're right. And, and I don't think I knew that when I volunteered for it, but watching back, I was like, oh yeah, this is a big music <laughs> one. Yeah. Flaps, as the kids used to say. It does. <laughs> so uh, so our, of that, I gave it a 10. Yeah. <laughs> perfect 10 out of 10. Love it. <laughs> yep. Uh, my original score was a 10 out of 10. I ain't changing that either. Mm-hmm. Uh, Liam, yours was a 9 out of 10. That sounds like I was just trying to be contrary. <laughs> I almost did that too. I was like, no, no, this is this is a ten out of ten music yeah. episode. <laughs> I, I don't, I don't I think, think. I think I would give it a ten now. Like, I think, I think it was, uh, yeah, maybe at the time you're you're trying. When we, at, at this point, Cal and I are so far into the to our show that we don't care if we agree on like every category yeah, and yeah, yeah, yeah. have the exact same score. But I feel like in those early days, maybe I was like, well, I can't give everything the same score, Cal. Mm-hmm. Right. So I'll, I'll I'll do one point less. I'll be different because I don't really disagree with <laughs> you anything. Got, you like you got to save the tens. You can't right. just be giving out tens. Right. That's right. That, that was all over the place. Right. As, as Cal <laughs> mentioned, this was our our original review of this was in episode four. So I think that was part of it too i was still like calibrating mm. my sense of what a what a perfect music score pun intended would be mm-hmm. and, uh, <laughs> and i knew we had like the forgotten coming up on the horizon and i uh-huh. knew that one would be a 10 so mm-hmm. i was like well, yeah. it can't also be a 10 but no it absolutely is like i i can't uh, i can't disagree with you guys at all perfect all right well uh let's move on to our finals final uh, category of the day and that is going to be our voice acting 
Uh, so we have quite, uh, quite, not quite a lot to talk about here. It's a relatively small cast. A couple of fun facts, of course, as we already mentioned at the top with mm -hmm. a new voice actor from Alfred. Uh, mm -hmm. We talked about uh, hashtag not our Alfred last week with uh, Mr. <laughs> Mr. Revel. Uh, That's right. His droll Alfred last week. And yes. this week is uh, the return of Ephraim Zemblis Jr. But uh, yes, pretty small cast, Liam. Yeah, as uh, as Ted alluded to, for some reason Bob Hastings is, is in this episode, even though <laughs> he's the armored car driver. He isn't. He was right. uh, he was somewhere right. down the hall. They were just like, "Hey, Bob, we need you to come in here and do a quick, uh, quick." Yeah, yeah. Security guard voice. You got a security guard voice. <laughs> <laughs> yes. You got an armored truck driver voice, Bob. Cook. All right, get in the booth. <laughs> That's right. We get him uh, very briefly, and we also have uh, Marie Devon as Summer Gleason. I think her first appearance, at least, it. Oh no, wait, she's in Christmas with the Joker too, and in production yes. order. Yes, production order. It wouldn't order. be her right. first appearance, but uh, but yeah, she's she's there briefly, and then otherwise, yeah, it's it's very heavily uh, focused on our our two leads of the piece. And Ted, uh, you might be able to speak to this a little bit. Uh, this this uh, when Mark Hamill came into the series, it was pretty late in the game, and there was another mm -hmm. Joker actor. That's right. We've already recorded lines for a few episodes, and this was one of them, correct? That's correct. And you should talk to James because he might be able to give you a little clip to play right about right here that you, I don't know, maybe I'd like to hear it too if something like that exists. <laughs> <laughs> Surprise. Surprise. Maybe Surprise. It does. is Let's it here? Listen. Batman. Hey, Batman. Looks like Captain Clown is really getting attached to you. You killed Captain Clown. You killed Captain Clown. Just for that, Batman. Hey, Batman, you stink so bad, I can smell you from here. <laughs> pew. <laughs> pew, pew, pew. <laughs> Justice is served hot. Batman, you're gonna melt just like a grilled cheese sandwich. Service with a smile. Oh, that's a joke, right? Batman finally told a joke. <laughs> Batman, you wouldn't let me fry, would you? Batman! I don't know. Was that cool? Yeah, <laughs> Did we just hear something cool? Um, I also was under the impression for some reason for years that Tim Curry was the voice of Captain Clown in some capacity for this episode. Mm. He doesn't talk. He doesn't say a single word. Mm. There's no voice of Captain Clown in this episode. So I don't know why, where, where my wires crossed. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah. Um, hearing, that, hearing that clip, though, which... It's, if it's wildly different it would be wildly different to imagine the it just sounded it's just not the joker like it's yeah it's hard to like think like <laughs> could i go into this thinking with a clear mind like okay this would be a good joker but i think even the variations that we've heard after it whether it's in the batman or um brave, and, brave bold. and the bold or some mm -hmm. of the other joker voices that we've heard uh performances of the joker it's just it doesn't it doesn't feel like it belongs in this yeah in this well, i guess it's because mark hamill's voice like really influenced everybody who came afterwards and without that precedent you know like i mean tim curry definitely went into it without any influence from right. Mark Hamill's voice because he was not in the cast and and um there's there's a couple rumors i think about why tim curry didn't take the role but i'm pretty certain the truth is because he had bronchitis at the time of production wow i don't know if that's 100 percent sure which but. can you imagine can you imagine like bronchitis defined the joker for a gen uh -huh. for, for multiple generations <laughs> Maybe he, he had bronchitis in that recording. I don't know. Right. Very possible. Uh, <laughs> imagine, imagine though, gave Mark Hamill. I mean, Mark Hamill already had an incredible career, but for all intents and purposes, right. his career with Star Wars sort of ended in 1983 and nothing happened until they re-released the films in 1997 again, and they became popular for our generation. Mm -hmm. But had a 
very long dead spot for him and his career so added another layer to his his career and fandom and aside from the trickster and the flash show oh, that's right. oh. <laughs> how, how could i forget how, could how I could you forget that one live action <laughs> trickster yes uh but yeah i mean this this episode uh you do have a lot of a lot of joker lines that uh i, I guess mark hamill must have gone in and re-recorded which mm-hmm. leads to a little bit it doesn't quite sound like the joker that we get later on in the in, in a couple of the other episodes i know some of it may have been him having to mimic or or to change his uh the way that he spoke and his inflection to match the match the animation so they didn't have to change it's the animation. possible Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. so there's a it's a little bit more i feel like it's a little bit more whiny than we were used to later on you don't get the the highs and lows of the voices that uh, mm-hmm. he would go the sort of the range that he would he would do but it's still there's still some some quite memorable lines including uh maybe maybe the greatest range that we see is when he says you killed captain clown yes like, yes an iconic That's huge range an iconic line from the series too right? yes if you don't remember anything else from this, you you'll have to remember you killed Captain Clown. One of the few times Batman broke his rule. <laughs> indeed, indeed. He also had a line. He says, uh, "Joker says to Captain Clown, he says, well, Captain, this could be the start of a beautiful friendship, which is a Casablanca.' That's <laughs> right. So good. I never knew Batman could sing so low. Well, Captain." This could be the start of a beautiful friendship. <laughs> yeah, there is there is some some good, well written uh, lines from the Joker. Um, I think on the flip side of that, Kevin Conroy. I, again, I don't know if this is early on direction. You're st- he's still finding the balance. Um, you get strictly the the Batman voice for the duration of it, even as mm-hmm. Bruce Wayne. But he's with Alfred, so he doesn't have to put on the fake Bruce Wayne voice. But uh, it's very quippy. He had a lot of quips written for him and, and his lines, as I mentioned, I think the one line is uh, after he survives the uh, the attempted drowning and he comes to surface. Uh, he says, you want to, he's something threatening that he's quipping to the you Joker. play dirty, I believe. Yes. So. It's, That's right. Yeah. It's, it's like, I looked at Liam, I was like, oh, that was a, that was a Keaton line. Like that's, <laughs> that sound like you want to get nuts. Like it's, <laughs> That's it's, right. that, it's essentially that line and it's delivered that way. So uh, some of it, I think Kevin Conroy suffered a little bit from the poor material he was given here, but uh, I didn't think it was necessarily his his best performance. He has far better performances later on in the series. Um, I I gave uh, originally gave the the voice score a six out of ten. Liam, you gave it a seven out of ten. I think I'd stick with my with my six out of ten. The Joker is good enough, I think, to to warrant that much of a score. But I know there's better better episodes, better performances ahead for both of the characters uh, long term. Uh, yeah, Ted, Ted, what about you? I'm going to give it a six out of 10 as well um, for the same reason. It's not, not perfect by any means. Um, The dialogue, like I know the dialogue is not any, any, um, the voice actors don't have any control over that necessarily, but like Mark Hamill is definitely the, like the voice actor in the show. Like Kevin Conroy is just doesn't have a lot to do. So. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 And sometimes that's just a, like, there's sometimes where the material lets the actors down and it's just like, it's not that they gave bad performances. It was just, there was nothing that was there to like, Oh yeah, that was incredible. Or there was a, there was opportunity for them to give a great performance. It's just, eh, the, yeah. it's let them down. Liam. That's how it goes sometimes. Yeah. I think I, w- I would stick with my, my seven out of 10. I, I do think there might be something to, like I said, because we know Mark Hamill came in so late, it does feel like he's, mimicking a cadence that was already sort of established by the previous actor and by the uh by the by the already finished animation perhaps that that he kind of had to mimic more than when he was able to kind of stretch his legs and and figure things out for himself so i think it, there's still some great lines the the you wouldn't let me fry to me even though that's not as iconic as you killed captain clown that might be my uh, my actual favorite <laughs> line yeah. this whole episode is you wouldn't let me fry would you <laughs> Batman you wouldn't let me fry would you
I always kind of like roll my eyes at that one. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Like, like there's like a genuine like vulnerability in that. Line. Yeah. Like he it's... might let him die. He killed Captain Clown earlier. Right? So. <laughs> Good point. <laughs> He's concerned. He's really worried that Batman is, uh, has turned over a murderous new leaf here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's, it's very like, yeah, a lot of it's very hokey and silly like we talked about. Yeah, I think I think Kevin Conroy, in these early like first five or ten production order episodes, he always, Batman always sounds like he has a cold to me, <laughs> which is so funny because then <laughs> they do in... Uh, Maybe he had bronchitis. Right. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> we talk about it, uh, I mean, Heart of Ice, right? Like there's a whole plot point of him having a cold in that episode. <laughs> that's right. But I, like, that's I, right. I was like, he sounds exactly the same in that episode to me as he does in like, <laughs> the other first 13 or whatever, where it's just, it's very, it sounds, it's a little bit more nasally. And I don't know if he's mm-hmm. more trying to like put on a more of a rasp to the voice or just add something there that is maybe cleaned up as he got more into the role yeah and maybe more as the scripts got more detailed too and kind of gave him that range for the character that's that's that might have been part of it and i i think we we mentioned this with uh, with james uh, last week but there's you know there's the famous story that i think he and mark hamill both tell about being in the recording booth and seeing like a clip of on leather wings or one of the early episodes and being just so in awe of what Mm -hmm. what this finished product looked like and sounded like maybe that also then informed yeah how how they went about you know their their process for recording after these these first few where they're just kind of they're going into a booth and saying the lines Mm -hmm. that are on the paper and and seeing what and then they realize oh we're making something special right yeah so yeah. I think maybe that could also be part of it because this is so early on, and I think it's I think it's four or five in the production order. So it's it's very I know it's on that first The Adventure Begins DVD release that had the first five or That's six right. episodes on it. Yeah, so, yeah. So it's uh, it's I know it's very early on in the series. So uh, yeah, it's it, I, you can definitely feel both him and Hamill sort of finding their footing, and also I maybe I give it a seven just because I'm so happy to have Ephraim Zimbalist as Alfred again after <laughs> Me too. having to return to the the dark ages of, of Clive, <laughs> Clive Revel's performance last week. so uh, I think maybe that bumps uh, it up one point for me there you go all right I well uh, that. <laughs> it's totaling up our scores here at the end uh Liam I originally gave it a 29 out of 40 you gave it a 27 out of 40 so obviously we changed a couple of our, uh, what we would have changed a couple of our scores so there would have been a little little lower uh at least by a point or two ted you got your total mine's 25 there so lower by a point or two there mm-hmm. you go mm-hmm. so I, I think i think ted's score truly reflects how we feel about this episode so yeah i think you're bring, right yeah bringing in bringing in a ringer here <laughs> I think was the, the best choice for this week's episode Absolutely. happy uh, to help <laughs> Now, Ted, we also at the very end talk about rewatchability. So uh, defining mm-hmm. things sort of, you know, our scores don't define this. We talked about how much we love the, the soundtrack and how much you love Captain Clown as a character. Yeah, um, this is um this is an episode that I will show friends who may not have seen a Batman episode ever for the yeah. first time because it's shorter than like a feet of clay or a Two-Face, mm-hmm. you know, and it's everyone knows the Joker mm-hmm. and has fun with the Joker. And this episode, may, it's not very uh it's not very heavy right there's not a lot of detail to it so it's yep. very much just throw them in at simple have plot fun with it kind of thing simple plot yeah yep S- simple resolution at the end yeah it's not bad yeah i'd say i'd say for the soundtrack alone you're like hey what defines this from whatever yes. else was happening on television at the time oh you watch spider-man the animated series okay well, let me show you what the a little bit of what was different about this and why people don't hold that as in quite a high regard as as the batman animated series yeah absolutely Sound, soundtrack and, and voice acting i think can lend lend to that so i'd give it a i'd give it a one thumb up yeah yeah, yeah. And, uh, and even though captain clown isn't like a mainstream comics character yet yes. <laughs> by any means i think he could always come back That's um right. he does appear as a downloadable character in the lego dc super villains right. game you can <laughs> you can get captain clown in the uh batman the main series dlc <laughs> oh it's oh, tremendous yeah. somebody uh-huh. somewhere was like i love captain Clown so much i'm putting him yeah. in the game like i don't care if it costs like us an extra mi- for that, right and i love that i don't That's care how about the pack <laughs> yes. i wanted to play as captain clown that's right it's like yeah sure batman and phantasm and whoever else makes it in they're fine but like <laughs> fine. somebody was like whatever 
have to do Captain Planet. <laughs> you have to. <laughs> and I love that. <laughs> Cap- the Captain has been been robbed of being made into plastic form for too long. We need, we need McFarland to pick up the Batman the animated yeah. and give us a Captain Clown figure. Uh, we- they could. They gave us those additional uh, no. just continue. Line, you know, they could do more. Keep the line going. Let's go. Let's <laughs> get a Captain crossed. Clown. All I right. Want, I want more of interesting. Scene. Give me Talon. Give me Hush. Give me Flashpoint Batman. Give me all the ones we you told me of already. <laughs> adventures continue. I think there's a way to do a Mr. Wing Captain Clown like Buddy Cop. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> one of the talks, but, that's, that's but a, we can figure something out. Like the other one could, Captain Clown could just like drive the car and like <laughs> make the getaway driver, like look and like, kind of, like <laughs> his head to the side and like the getaway driver. But Mr. Wing can fly. I don't know why they need a getaway car. Oh, good, good, mm. good point. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Maybe Mr. Wing is flying and he's got his talon feet <laughs> on the on the shoulders of Captain Clown and they're just <laughs> flying off into the sky together. <laughs> Oh, oh, tremendous just, right. just ideas were given away for free i know and there's definitely something about a captain and his earning his wings you know what i mean <laughs> yes there, there's something there oh thematically to, to explore <laughs> just done like a six issue arc <laughs> call us dc comics you know where oh to find gosh. us all right well that will begin to wrap up the episode ted thank you so much for joining us uh, thanks well, again for having me it was no, so much fun man. this I, I can't believe this uh this however long this, this has been flew by uh we we're so glad to finally have you on the program yeah, and we'll you've talk- spent 229 episodes with dami <sighs> i don't know how we did it <laughs> i really don't know how we did it uh but this certainly will not be the last time we'll have you on again in the future we are already looking forward to that uh before we uh before we let you go though we'll give you opportunity as we did james last week you pro- might be plugging the same stuff but that's okay we'll be pl- listener- like i overlap yeah plug it away so plug <laughs> everything uh that uh, that you have to plug so first of all, you can find me specifically at tedkindrick.com. That's where I got all my all my creative endeavors listed. I do short films. I'm writing. Uh, I've got comic book stuff I want to do. Um, obviously, the Watchtower database is a big thing, too. Um, always working on new video essays for that. This year, um, after Zeta Month um, is wrapping up in November, I think I'm going to be able to squeeze one Christmas-related video in uh, before Ooh, the year's over. That. Yeah, about Paul Dini's Jingle Bell character. Okay. Um, so that's something to look for. She's kind of like a similar madcap Harley Quinn style character, but she's Santa's daughter. Um, and so not a lot of people have read those comics and I'm looking forward to to talking about them. That's awesome. Yeah, so that's yeah. what's coming up for me. That's my next like major Watch Her Database video probably. And if you're if you're a listener here uh, to to uh, to the DCAU review and you are heavy on the comic nerd side, Ted, we know that you are the you're like the comic book expert. I, I've read so many comics. <laughs> uh, like when I was, um, I started collecting comics in 2003. So about, and I've always been a DC person. So it was like Identity Crisis was was in the middle of, and so I got to collect as Infinite Crisis was ramping up mm-hmm. uh, into Final Crisis and the Blackest Night into the New Fifty Two. Mm. I've been there right in our ever since. <laughs> All that stuff, yeah. A lot of parallels, to, yeah, uh, to our own. <laughs> comic fandom especially when nice. it's like blackest night and absolutely Final yeah Final. i love some jeff johns grant morrison scott snyder i've I, I, at this point i'm definitely like following writers mm-hmm. in terms of what i'm reading and artists absolutely too, yeah, so. absolutely absolutely well thank you ted for being on the program um again we're we're so glad to have you on and uh, we can't wait to have you on next time but uh, thanks for taking some time today and uh thanks for joining us thanks again thanks, yay ted. all right thanks ted Man, Liam, how fun was that? Absolutely. Um, we uh, we talked a little bit off the air with Ted, and uh, Ted's just really cut from the same cloth uh, as far as like our style, like when we became fans of this stuff, our the comic book side of this compared to the animation side of everything. Just a lot of a lot of similarities there. We we uh, we got along from kind of the the first first second we ever spoke to each other. So uh, it was great to finally have ted on the show and that will certainly not be the last time uh, if, if he'll uh, if he'll agree to come back which i think he will uh, it will certainly not be the last time we have ted on the show absolutely don't forget uh check them out at dcau watchtower on their socials and stuff like that head over to youtube and check out the watchtower database 
Liam, you can also support us at DCAU Review, both on Twitter and Instagram. If you would like to join the conversation, let us know what you think about this episode, The Last Laugh. Let us know if you feel like our scores were way off, if you agree with us or not. You can also uh, support us by subscribing to this podcast. You can do so on YouTube at youtube.com slash the pod tower. Also head over to your favorite podcast app. If you listen to us there, we are definitely there. You can subscribe to us. And if it allows you to leave a five-star review, you can do just that. That helps us out. If your podcast app lets you leave a little paragraph telling people what you like, do, go ahead and do that. That helps us out as well. In addition to that, you can support the podcast by using the link at the bottom of our Anchor site. It's anchor.fm slash DCAU review. You can support us directly that way if you want to support us monetarily, uh, or you can also head over to dcaureview.com and check out the store tab and get yourself a piece of merchandise. Uh, The aforementioned Mr. Wing is featured uh, (laughs) a couple of times uh, on some, some funny things there. So check that out. Liam, we are going to be continuing here in the month of October celebrating Batman the Aniver- uh, Batman the Animated Series 30th anniversary. Looking back at a few of these episodes that we covered very early on, and uh, I think it's time we complete the trifecta, don't you? We we had James on week one, we had Ted on uh, week two, and next week there's only one member of the Watchtower database left at this point. That's right, and we will in fact be joined by Maddie next week talking about uh, maybe, again, when we talk about the most iconic episodes of the series for one reason or the other, this one for a very specific reason, of course, we will be talking about the uh, the legendary Beware the Grey Ghost. Man, another one of those episodes that just lives in people's minds that they automatically uh, associate with Batman the Animated Series. So many memorable lines, music. Uh, I can't wait to chat this up with Manny from Watchtower Database next week. Can't wait. Absolutely. But until then, I'm Cal. And I'm Liam. And we'll talk to you on the next episode of the DCAU Review. Bye-bye.